on February 26th, Finland will choose the song and the artist who will present them in Eurovision 2022. Uh, Uden Musikilpailu has seven songs and we will discuss about them tonight. Join me are my, for my lovely colleagues. It's a full crowd today. Um, we will go through all the songs in the order that they got released. Um, first up is Cyan Kicks with Hurricane. Nick, what do you think about this song? Well, it, it, it was definitely a strong start to the lineup. Definitely. I think um, uh, Elisa Reed is behind it and her Melfest envy is one of my favorites of all time. Um, so I was really excited to see that and I was sort of let down. I was, I was like hoping for a top five contender and I didn't quite get it. Um, it's really good. It's really solid. Um, although I think in, in the rock department, they're sort of being overshadowed in this lineup. Um, so I think it's a good addition to the national final, a good way to get their name even more solidified on the Eurovision um, eyes, really. But I don't think we'll be seeing them in Italy, sadly. Yeah, same kicks are backed by the same record label as Blind Channel last year. Um, Lisa, do you think same kicks can do the same as Blind Channel did in UK last year, coming as a relatively unknown artist and then just taking the victory by a landslide? Um, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I really like it because it's got, it reminds me of like um, Paramore, but just with more of a stronger rock sound to it. And it's catchy enough for me. It's just whether the Finnish public's going to get behind it when there's other stuff here and, and, and other artists that already have a, a following and seem to have a bit more traction going for them at, at the minute than Cyan Kicks. But you know they they could be in contention with the the right performance because uh, i i i i can feel um elisa's influence in this too with the stuff she does with her band and i i just really enjoy um the, the whole sort of concept and vibe for it it just depends how it will be staged because i don't think that part of it is particularly easy to do with a song like that other than just like oh let's all be guitars and and uh, anthemic but Everyone does that. You've got to sort of stand out a bit more from the crowd than than just being in an arena show. Absolutely, and there's quite a few rock entries in UMK this year. Pente, do you think Hurricane will stand out from the rest of the entries? That's a very good question. I don't know if it will actually stand out. I think I really like the song. Um, the build up is quite nice, and I like um, the chorus. It's very strong, but I do feel that. In general, it kind of fades when you compare it to the other rock entries. And I feel like they're kind of, when you have voters who like rock songs, they're going to have to choose between those. And I do think that the other rock songs will generally get more votes. That doesn't rule out that if they win, I would very much enjoy seeing them in Eurovision, um, especially with a female vocalist, which I really like on rock songs. But I'm not sure about their odds at the moment because they're like, I think Finland is one of the strongest national finals this year. And I don't know if it's enough to stand out for them. Hurricane was the first song that got released. And I think lots of people were really happy about it. But then when the other songs came on, then Hurricane kind of faded to the background. Costa, what do you think? Can they actually prove that they are worthy representatives on the final? Or do you think people already forgot about Hurricane? I think UMK this year is full of very risky entries, and I think this is one of the safer ones. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think if Finland want to kind of secure a kind of nice mid-table result, um, Hurricane would be a good choice. It's giving very 16th place in the grand final. Um, they're in a terrible semi based on countries and track records alone. So I do think Finland is kind of a nailed on qualifier based on, and I say maybe go for Tommy, but we'll get to that. I feel like they're in a good position to play a bit more risky. So I would like to see them do that. Hurricane is very well presented, but the lyrics are kind of uh, basic. And that's kind of my one gripe with it. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I think it's a good song. It's like, if this would be the entry that Finland sends to Congress, I would be really happy with it um, as a Finn. But the, the, the lyrics are, they are so basic. And I, I think, uh, compared to Plain Channel last year, 
I, I think coming from the same record label and seeing the whole year is an experience, um, they try to go with like more uh, maybe jury friendly style of rock music. So they could actually get both from the, both the supporters and the, the juries. But I, I don't think the song would grab the, the attention in the 25 song final as much as Blanchino did. Moving on to the um, big hit in Finland already. Um, Bess is competing with the song Ram Bam Bam. Uh, she's been on top of the Spotify um, top 50 in Finland for days now. Um, Lisa, do you think this helps in UMK? And do you think Bess has a chance at winning the contest? I mean, it helps in a televote way. Um, it's just that we've seen it before in a, in a lot of national finals where songs that do really well on Spotify, it's not necessarily the same viewership that's tuning into the, the national final that that hears it and, and votes. But I mean, it's it's great for her that she's having success because this is easily my favorite song in, in the lineup. Um, Sammy will know who I'm talking about. She reminds me of a very young Kayaku in that sort of angry Schlager um, uh, pathway that she has. And that's why I really enjoy this because there's just ele elements of that. It's, it's, it's fun and in your face. And it also reminds me a little bit of uh, Pink, You in Your Hand as well, um, just in terms of sort of that sort of badass girl boss way. And I, I, I just want this to be like, it's going to be a, a really wow moment, hopefully, if if the stage performance is going to be anything like how the music video is. So I'll enjoy it and I hope it does well, but I'm not sure um, if the same people that are streaming it on Spotify are going to be the same people watching the show on the 26th. And I think lots of international fans want Finland to send a song in Finnish. Um, Penta, do you think we should do it this year with Bess or... Uh, maybe another song. Well, I was just thinking about saying that I really like um, that it's in Finnish. I think it would be really cool if you sent a song in Finnish. Um, but it's not my favorite song from the selection, unfortunately. I do think that there's a lot of potential there, especially speaking um, staging wise. I haven't heard her vocally, um, but somehow I have very good faith in that as well. Um, so there is a lot of potential. I didn't know that it was actually top of the Spotify list, which is interesting, could definitely influence things. Like Lisa said, maybe little. It doesn't mean that it's going to win, but I am always in favor of countries sending songs in their native language. I think that's really cool or a language that's very important to the country, even if it's not an official language. So yeah, I, um, if it wins, I wouldn't mind solely because of that reason. Yeah, we've seen it in Finland in the past few years. Like we had some big hits like I Love You and uh, Ticcialina, who both, as I said, were big hits in Finland. But then when it came to voting the, for the entry to Eurovision, then Finnish people didn't think this song would be the best choice. Um, Costa, what do you think? Do you think Ramabam could be a good entry for Finland this year? Um, well, I'm going to blow my load a bit early here and say that I think this is the song they should send this year. It's actually not my absolute favourite of the selection, but thinking competitively, I think this is a really impactful entry. I think it's kind of like a butch Chicholina vibes. She has a very commanding presence to her. I like her deep voice. Like she's just like very compelling in the music video. And I think that I think it will translate into a performance, at least I hope so. I think it's a very exciting entry. It's very dynamic. It kind of takes me back to the songs that Finland used to send like a few decades ago. And I think it'll be a worthy successor to Blind Channel because it's not an obvious um, transition. It's moving into another kind of similarly very popular song that could go really big domestically, but has a, an appeal that transcends just Finland. And I think it's a very catchy song and I think that's very important to have a good strong hook when it's not in English. And yeah, I'm very looking forward to seeing what she does with the stage. Yeah, obviously, I mean, the Finnish lyrics might be difficult for the rest of the Europe and Australia to sing along. Ram Pam Pam is something that everyone knows. Um, Nick, do you think this helps with maybe Finnish people thinking that Finnish, uh, the songs in Finnish are not that good, but uh, with Ram Pam Pam, do you think it, it helps that the um, slogan of the song is so international? Oh, absolutely. I mean, 
Um, when I heard Ram Pam Pam and then thinking that the first song was Hurricane, um, it took me back to Serbia last year. And the only thing I could remember from Hurricane's entry was them going Ram Pam Pam. Um, so, yeah, that would absolutely help them. Um, uh, and it, Although I think, I mean, no offence to you as a, as a Finn, but I don't think Finland has ever given a single damn about what the rest of the world thinks about what they are sending. Uh, case in point, 2015. Case in point, 2016. Finland just doesn't care what we think. Finland does what they want to do. And that is why I think Finland has, in the past couple of years, become sort of a fan favourite for everyone, going, I can't wait what Finland are up to this year, because you just never know. Um, I think Bess would, would just be another example of Finland going, here's what we like, enjoy it for three minutes, and good luck with your votes. Um, and I would happily support them in that. I mean, it's it's a wonderful song. It It is the throwback to, well, Lisa mentioned you and your hand by pink, and that just made me go, click, yeah, that's it. Uh, but it's also that 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 you know mid zero schlager in Melfest that's sort of lingering in the background as well. Um, yeah, that is a good song. I mean, it's not my favorite of the show, but it, it is a good song. So I would be happy for Finland to pick it. Yeah. And I think the keyword here is um, sending something that uh, the Finnish people actually like, as I said previously. Um, there have been songs that have done well, well in the charts in Finland, but then when it comes to voting at, for Eurovision, I think Finnish people are often thinking that we can't do well with the song in Finnish. But of course, the, the latest example was and already the song wasn't strong enough. So we can't really, really compare that. We can't do well in Finnish just because we didn't do well in 2015. But moving along, uh, next up is probably the biggest name we ever had in UMK, uh, the 2003 hit makers, um, the Erasmus, of, of course, they had the big, I would say, worldwide hit with In the Shadows. Um, they had some smaller hits um, in, in Finland and all, actually they had another single on the UK chart as well, uh, but of course people don't remember it at all. Jezebel is really throwback to those early 2000s. Um, Lisa, what do you think could Finland, um, or should Finland send a, a, another artist followed by the Rudolf, who also had a big hit uh, worldwide and then came back to Eurovision and didn't do that well? Do you think Erasmus has the same problem with the song? Yeah, that kind of is a danger of that. Like, I, I think I think it, it kind of happens with, with a lot of countries. They're just like, ooh, here's the big famous act. Let, let's send that one and, and see what happens. Like we've seen Germany do it with Cascada and, and other countries too. And um, I feel like we're not going to have much much choice in this because the, the polls are just insane for the Erasmus. I mean, you know, they are one of Finland's like most famous international acts. I mean, it, it, it speaks for itself, but... Um, Overall, I mean, I'm not that fond of the song, only in the sense that I feel like by the Rasmus standards, this is kind of a bit safe. And I was kind of, I was, I was really excited about the fact that they were here because there was that part of me in around 2003 that was kind of more into rock and and, and punk and stuff than you'd ever imagine from me. But um, I, 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 I don't know. I was just, I, I had so many expectations, and I was like, oh, okay, is is that it? But everyone seems to really be into it and, and enjoy it, not just Finnish people, but people I see on, on Twitter are always like, you know, really hyped for this. So they obviously still have um, a fan base going and, and a lot of and a lot of traction. So um, it's just you always kind of get a bit scared of when countries sort of do the same trick twice. I kind of like the fact that Finland just kind of do what they want to do for a little bit. And then sort of every five to ten years, they're like, oh, yeah, we want a top ten now. Let's bang, go with that, go with our rock genre trend. Yeah, we can talk about um, Cascada or Bonnie Tyler, but also the Netherlands has a good example of sending someone who had a big hit and then did well in Eurovision. Nick, do you think the Rasmus could do something similar as Anouk did in 2013 and actually do well in the contest? Yeah, I think they can do better than Anouk did in 2013. I mean, what Anouk did was that she she was known for um, 
for all her rock entries and then went, right, I'm going to do something completely different because I like it. She was being quite Finnish at that time. Um, and the Rasmus are just doing the Rasmus. And I played this song to a friend of mine. I played it to my mother. And they both went, oh, that's quite good, isn't it? And that made me go, right. So it's not just me living in my 2003 bubble, going all mad over them being here. It might actually be a really good song. Lyrically, mwah, I, I, I'd give them the advice to reconsider some of the lines. Um, but anyway, as a song, I bop along to it happily every single day, every hour of the day. And if I had any power in Finland, I would just put this in an envelope, send it off to DBU and say, this is our entry, good luck with it. Um, and then see them come top five. Absolutely. Yeah, the singer of Erasmus, Lauri, said that he called Desmond Child and saying that he wants to write the Eurovision winning entry. Costa, do you think Chisipova could actually win Eurovision or even no, UMK? No, I don't. I don't. Um, you know, Eurovision is really great. Um, you have people like myself and people like Nick in the same community and it's wonderful. Um I had never heard of the Rasmus. I had never heard in the shadows before because I was four when it came out. And I admittedly, I listened to it after the uh, after Jezebel came out and I was like, this is actually a really good song. And then I go back to Jezebel and I'm like, okay, well, it's been oh, like almost two decades later. Why are you doing slightly less <laughs> of what you did before? Like, where's the evolution? Um, if I was like a one or handful of hit wonder, I wouldn't feel the need to make music anymore. I'll just live off the royalties, but good for them for sticking out. They obviously have a legacy that will continue to make them somewhat relevant. If that is enough, to, if a song that was released in 2003 is enough to bring them to Eurovision in 2022, I'll be very disappointed in Finland. The song is nothing special. It's boomer rock. It's not fresh. The lyrics are bad. They're bad lyrics. And they can do better. It's the sixth best song in this selection. And if it wins, it's because they had a hit once upon a time. That's not a good or compelling reason to send to Eurovision. And I think it will do poorly in Turin because there's no call to action here. There will be better rock songs in the contest. This is only slightly better than Bulgaria's rock entry. Yeah, um, as Lisa mentioned, um, this has been the favorites uh, on the on the polls and I think Finnish people are really excited that the Rasmus is in UMK. Um, Pente, what do you think about the Chappelle and do you think it has a chance to win UMK? Uh, does it have a chance to win is one question I think name wise that would definitely help them a little. Um, personally it's also one of my favorites but it's not like um, when I listened to Blind Channel for the first time, when National Final Songs got released last year, it was love at first sight. Like, I loved it. I'm a huge fan of rock music. I don't have the same feeling about this, even though it's my favorite. Um, like Costa said, even though, no offense, I disagree with most of it. <laughs> I did agree that, um, you know, there's going to be enough rock music this year. It's a theme that you know, the winner from last year, it kind of gets repeated. The genre, we saw a lot of, you know, like ballads in 2020, 2021, arcade type songs. We're going to see a lot of rock music this year. And I'm very happy about that. And it is a question if it will actually stand out. If it does, I'll be very happy about that. Um, and I do hope that it will win. But I also want to admit that there might be consequences to that. Yeah. Yeah, um, well, we saw it last year with Defo Brothers. They were a big band in Finland already before UMK and they didn't win. So I don't know. I, I've heard Laura singing live and it's not that good. So I have to see for the live performance. But for me, I, I think this would make a good entry for Finland. Moving on to the second song in Finnish in this year's final, um, Sun Numero by Young Hearted. Um, Pente, will you be calling their number in the final? Well, no. <laughs> no, it's not a bad song per se. But like I said, the Finnish national final, it's very strong this year. And all things considered, if I were to call for someone, it's not this one. If you put this song in another national final, 
I think it would do much better, but this is just too strong for it. It's nice, like, if it comes on shuffle on Spotify, I won't skip it, but it doesn't really, like, do anything for me. It's just there. Yeah, I think this song will become a big radio hit in Finland, but also for me, I don't think it will make a big impact on the Euros in the final. Um, Costa, do you think Young Hearted uh, can surprise us all and win UMK? It's actually my favorite of UMK this year, which might be surprising, but I'm really feeling the kind of twee, soft ballads this year. Although Kelly Masoitan was my favorite last year. Um, so maybe that's not surprising. I also love Portugal Eurovision, so maybe I'm just a dull person, whatever. Um, it's just really pretty. It's just, it builds nice. It's really well composed. And I think it really utilizes the Finnish language. I don't expect it to win. I don't think they should send it to Eurovision, but it's a song I'll definitely cherish going forward. Yeah, um, compared to their previous material, I think this is, again, a bit more rocky. There is this uh, last half of the song that yeah, it really... Um, the the guitars come in and and I think it's 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 the only part of the song that actually makes an impact. Nick, uh, do you think Finland should take a risk and send something like this to the contest? No. <laughs> no, you know what what the thing is. Um, when I listen to it, I go like, oh, that's that's quite an enjoyable song. What is it again? And I need to open my phone and look on Spotify every single time what on earth it is and that is not a good song and not, not a good sign i mean i can't remember it the minute it's over we're now discussing it but if you would ask me to hum it i couldn't do it um it is perfectly enjoyable it's good in the lineup uh but i, I fear that it will feel as an interval act between six competing entries so yeah i don't think this is the one yeah, we previously talked about songs in Finnish and how Finnish people think, um, or what Finnish people think if we should send them to the concerts. I think with this one, it's not, it's not Ram Pam Pam where you actually can sing along to at least some parts of it. Um, but I, I think the Finnish people uh, really like the lyrics of this song. Um, Lisa, what do you think about Sun Numero? I really like it. I mean, it's not my favorite, but it's definitely in and around there. Just because I like the sort of the, sort of the chill, easy listening vibe to it, and um, the lead singer is a good vocalist, and you can tell that. Um, and there's a quality there to it, and I, I just feel that it probably will within this lineup. It might come across as a bit more filler than it would elsewhere, which is a bit unfortunate because all of these songs stand out um, in their own right and showcase that Finland does have a, a diverse range of artists to pick from. Yeah, I also think this is probably, I don't think it's coming last, but I think it will be the song that comes sixth in the final. Move along, uh, the next song, it caused some panic in, in Finland with the song title. Um, it's Oliveira with Thank God I'm an Atheist. Um, Costa, do you think if we send this to Eurovision, if there might be some bigger, bigger drama with the song title or the lyrics? I mean, there are a lot of, as we saw with El Diablo last year, there are a lot of people who are still very Christian, who knew uh, they won't like it. But the song itself, I think, it is a lot of people made the Victoria comparisons from Bulgaria. I think I wouldn't be surprised if it, it sounds very akin to the songwriting camp that that took place um, for those songs. But I do like the production. I think it has kind of a nice swelling vibe. It's very impactful, and I don't like, like this kind of like little girl kind of mousy voice thing that she's got going on. I think it's a bit tired, but the song. Is actually pretty good and it's not it's yeah i think it i don't think it's going to win but i think it will be kind of an interesting song in the lineup to throw in there yeah olivera is the artist from the seven artists who doesn't have um, a career um as a solo artist at, at least um she featured on the song by tiesto but um w when you look at the lineup i, I don't think many pe finnish people know her nick do you think that can be a good thing or do you think um, like the artists like Terasmus who already have the fans will actually grab more televos than the song. Well, I think it can help you to be a completely new new artist when you do something surprising and something people haven't seen before. Like um, nothing related to this song, but just 
think back of when Tones and I first had a breakthrough, that was so completely different in the way she sang and the way she performed that we all went, whoa, that's interesting. The fact that with Oliveira, we're already comparing her and we've seen the Billie Eilish and we've seen the Victorias and, oh, she's just another European sad girl. Here we go again. Um, she's not new in that kind of thing. You know, it's not new what she's doing. It's not. So I don't think that will help her a lot. And I think in this lineup, she will she will suffer. So I don't think Finland should be going to this one. Yeah, it's really different from the rest of the songs. It's the only like really slow song. Um, Pente, do you think it helps or does it just get buried between all the more rock entries and all the up-tempo songs? I think it helps. I think it helps if you're one of the slower entries in a in a lineup that has a lot of rock songs, a lot of upbeat things. And otherwise, I really actually like it. Um, and I, <laughs> that's kind of bad, but I like the controversy around the title because I think it's very interesting. You really have to like, because you read the title and it's just like, okay, that's like, you want to know where she's going with it. So you listen to the song and then it's like this kind of existential crisis. It's, yeah, I think it's a, it's a really good song if she can perform it live. Um, I don't think it's going to win, but it doesn't rule out that. I personally just like really enjoy it, but I also really liked Victoria. So, you know, sad girl ballads. I like them. <laughs> yeah, as last year, the international jury only has 25% uh, say in, in, in the vote. I, I think this is the song that will grab some votes from the jury, but not as much from the televoters or Lisa, what do you think? Well, I, I'm going to be the contrarian as always and just say I actually had to switch this off halfway through because it was just so painful to my ears, that vocal. I, I'm, I'm sorry, like, you know, may, maybe it'll be imp impressive in a wow moment live with the staging. I'm sure it's coming for that and to make people sort of think deeply about the, the lyrics. I, I just can't get past that squealy dolphin vocal, whatever that was. It, it hurt me. So, um, yeah, this one is not for me, unfortunately. I, I have to agree. I, I, I think after it was released, I didn't listen to it once. Uh, like, I, I just don't like her voice that much. And also, I, I think it's, it's kind of, yeah, yeah, it's a sad girl song. And I, I think at the moment, I really want to listen to something like Bam 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 rather than this, this song. I, I like the lyrics, but yeah, it's just the, the whole mood. Is kind of turn off for me. Last year we have Danny. This year we have Tommy Lantinen uh, with the song Elama Kanta Mua. Um, of course, UMK, it's a family show, for sure. Everyone watches nowadays, but I think this bringing Tommy Lantinen in is just for those who grew up in the 19s and maybe heard about him. Then um, I don't think it has any chances in this final pente what, what do you think about the song i agree with you i'm not going to repeat the title but i agree with you completely um it's actually pretty fun um i like you know there's always got to be a song like this in a national final to kind of you know keep the keep everyone entertained and like you said kind of create that nostalgic feeling that will make probably more people want to watch it as well but does it stand a chance? No. And I can be very quick about that. No. Uh, also, when uh, the podcaster Ule talks about the song, they always talk about the songwriters. The song is, of course, uh, written by a band members of the band Hello Helsinki. You might know them from uh, last year's Interval Act, and they are a huge band in Finland. Nick, do you think it's a good thing that they gave the song away, or do you think this actually could have worked with another singer? This could have worked with Harlem and Helsinki themselves. Um, I think for, for UMK, it's good that Tommy is here. You know, you said it last year we had Danny, and a couple of years ago we had what's her name, Amy, I think, with drama. Um, it's good that we have these seniors entering the stage and sort of reviving their careers once more. Um, is it going to win? No, 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 no. It's what they want. But it's incredible. It's good to have it. Yeah, it's definitely a positive song, man. And it, like, it adds something to the mix. Like even it's a rock entry, it's it's, pitch, it's like completely different from Hurricane and even Chesapeake. Um, but Lisa, do you think it, it's a good song that actually has a chance in this year's final? 
I mean, I don't think it has much chance, but I enjoy it for what it is. Like it took me by surprise in in the kind of the same way that I enjoy it when Hassa Anderson and and others come to Melfest and upset all the kiddies when when they get through to the final. And I, I yeah, I enjoyed this a lot more than I expected to. We we love an old Finnish dad having a fun a fun time, but it's not going to win. Yeah, it, it's not. Uh, like same with hung, young hearted i think this will get a lot lots of uh, radio play but yeah it, it, it's not it's not even a hit in in finland like it, i think it already dropped from the top 50 um costa do you think that is a good sign that um it, it's it's playing on radios or do you think it it says everything when the song dropped already from the spotify top 50 even if it's been out for like a week I think it says everything. You know what? I've been ageist enough today. I'll just say good for him. Our final song comes from uh, Isaac Sene. The song is called Umayava, and it's a somewhat a bisexual anthem uh, in the song. He talks about having ladies in the other nights, but for this night, um, he thinks someone is looking really hot, and that happens to be a dude. Uh, Lisa, what do you think about the song, and uh, especially the message behind it? Yeah, I I really like this because it's just very progressive for for Finland, and it 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 has um, a, a real wow factor in, in terms of if people sort of understand the concept of the song. It's just how that will be translated to the UMK stage, but um, I I really like the sort of the retro the weekend vibes to it. But th- there is actually like I'm, uh, it's been bugging me. There's something that I know from like my dad's record collection in the 80s that is there in that backing beat but I've yet I to have figure the same out what it thing. is yeah <laughs> but um yeah it's it's a great fun track and it took me by surprise in how much I liked it more than I thought I would but I did notice that there is um Finnish locals are, are actually really excited by by Isaac in in almost in more ways than than the Rasmus so There's competition here, and it's going to be an exciting watch come the final. Absolutely, um, Lisa, you mentioned the weekend. Some people have been comparing him to Michael Jackson. Um, Penta, do you think it's a good thing that there are these international stars that uh, people think Isaac resembles, or do, do you think it's just another case, as with Oliver, that everyone is thinking, "Oh, this is just another uh, the weekend, another uh, song in this '80s wave." Yeah, that that's always that you can't really predict that. It really depends on the reaction of the audience to the song because if the song is generally liked by people, they will be like, "Oh my god, it reminds me of the weekend. That's a great thing. That's so fun. It reminds me of music that I like." If it's a song that's not very well received by the public, everyone will be like, "Oh, they're just trying to, you know, follow the hype that's going on right now on the radio." So you really can't know. I feel like. Um, as for the song itself, really fun, really fun message. Um, but I had to be honest when you mentioned it, I had to think for a second which one it was again, because I kind of forgot about it. That's not taking away that it's not a good song, but it it didn't really stick with me as much as the others. But yeah, you know, like if it does well, that's great. Um, maybe we can expect a really fun staging for it as well. Yeah, uh, another song in, in Finnish, and as Lisa said, it's also, I, I think, more among the Eurovision fans than the general public who think that this is an actually a good song and that it's a song that we should like try to send to Eurovision. Like, as we said, Finland sends rock, Finland sends some crazy stuff. This could be actually a modern song that we didn't send before. Um, Nick, what do you think about Kumaya Band? Do you think it has a chance? Um, at UMK and maybe at Eurovision? Um, I think this is one where if it wins UMK, we're all suddenly going, oh, this now is the time to keep an eye on this. because would, It would be a massive shock to me if this wins UMK. I mean, I currently think that it might be the one with the smallest chance of winning because... I don't see why you'd pick up the phone for it right now. But if it turns out that people did pick up the phone and that the jury did get behind it, then suddenly 
there might be some momentum going in, in Isaac's direction. Um, nevertheless, I, this is all very hypothetical, what I'm saying here, because I don't think it's going to happen. Like Bender, it's that kind of song where I went, wait, what is it again? Bing. And when you mentioned that it's a bisexual anthem, I was like, oh, I did not get that message at all. Like, I, I wasn't invested enough to look at the translation of the lyrics. Has to be said, though, Finnish is a gorgeous language to sing in. Um, when, 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 when people speak Finnish, it, it, it sounds almost melodic. And when you do it in music, it just flows quite naturally. Like, um, Dutch isn't that language. Dutch doesn't flow as naturally. Um, Finnish does. So I'd be happy for them to send something in Finnish, but you know, guys, this is right there. Yeah, I, um, I think the problem is that it doesn't have a like a climax, and also the like, last minute is, is is just repeating. There's not like, and also like the the last maybe like ten seconds is just fading. There's not this big explosive ending that Eurovision songs usually have. Uh, but then again, it's it's really different from everything that we have at Eurovision, like these kind of songs. They, I, I, I believe this wasn't made for Eurovision, and that can be a good thing. Or, or what do you think, Costa? I'm a big fan of this song. Actually, I think it's very kind of fun. It's very fresh, very LGBT, all those good things. I like that it has this kind of sheen to it. Like it is just very polished, and I think it lends itself to a really good staging, more so than probably any other song in this selection. I think the bands are just going to be bands and just have like a setup. And maybe have some nice visuals to accompany it. This has like I see mirrors, I see lasers, I see lights, I see see I, I see a lot of kind of like visual aesthetic pleasingness happening, and I think it will be quite a nice risky entry to send. Like I said, I think they're in a really safe semi. I think they could really stand out with something like this. It could bomb completely, but why not take the risk? I think it's better to send a risky entry to the contest than something that's kind of predictable, and. If they're gonna send something in Finnish, I would prefer it be best, but I am excited to see how this translates live. Yeah, I think it's uh, my favorite song when I listen to it. Um, like with the other songs, I think I, I get most from this, but Isaac is really interesting artist. And as Costa said, I think there's a lot of potential on the performance. And I, I think if we send him to Eurovision, there might be some, um, like I think it's really good for the media or, or the, the whole story. I think the whole story behind Isaac, um, his background, the lyrics and everything. But I, I'm not too sure if Finnish people think um, this is the best choice for us. But let's go around and I want answers to two questions. Uh, first is, which is your favorite song to win UMK? And which is song you think Finland will send to your vision this year? Let's start with Nick. Well, my answer for both questions is the same. It is the Rasmus with Jezebel. Take me back to the zeros, take me back to my childhood and send Jezebel to Turin. So I think they're going to go for it and I want them to go for it. Costa. My favourite is Young Hearted, but I think Bess is the best option for Turin. Penta. That's a very difficult question. Um, my favourite is the Rasmus. And it's going to be, you know, I agree with Nick. It's going to be the Rasmus. And Lisa. I, I want them to sound best, but I'm not allowed to have nice things. So it's going to end up being the Rasmus. Lisa, we have secret. That's that's all we're getting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was my one win this year. And it's but downhill for the rest. Uh, I, I have to agree with most of you. I think the Rasmus will win just because things people seem to think that because they had this one hit back in the days that we all do uh, well uh, my favorite as i said is um Kumaya Papaya, Isaac Sene, but I, or, I really like um best as well and i would be really proud if if we send a song in finnish to the contest but this was our discussion about umk uh, as said in the intro finland will select the entry to given 2022 on february 26th we will talk about the entry um, after we know which one is it. So make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell. And of course, follow all the news on ESC Extra and also our social medias on Twitter, Instagram, 
uh, Facebook and also all the playlists on Spotify and do we have something else I think that covers all. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later.